And on the sixth day, God was bored out of his skull. So he spake unto what he had created thus far, saying, Where there be harmony, let there be discord. Where there be unity, let there be divisions. Where there be tolerance, let there be suspicion. Where there be prodi, let there be tim. Where there be bigotry, let there be bampottery. Where there be balloons, let there be broadcasters. Where there is truth, let there be exclusives. Where there are phonies, let there be phonins. Where there be a nation, let there be late injury call-offs. Where there is sanity, let there be football. Football fans like. Exactly. You lay on all these facilities for them, they just don't appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I go to all this effort. I'll tell you why you go to all this effort. It's because you love the game. What? Even when I'm hating it? Especially when you're hating it. That's the thing about Scottish football. You love to hate it, but you also hate to love it. It's the ultimate addiction. And see, once you're hooked, there's no cure. Mm. I know what you mean. It's that feeling you get that no matter where you are in the world, at a quarter to five on a Saturday, you've got to know the results. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're running about like a mad skull, looking for a sporting edition of Tori Molina's Times. <laughs> or lying on a beach in Florida trying to get Radio Clyde in your tranny. <laughs> and then you've been on the phone for about half an hour trying to get through your pal back home, and you finally manage and it's said, Tom, Tom, I saw Scott, listen it, what? Oh, no, no, listen, we're having a brilliant time here, aye. Listen, how did the boys go on? They get beat for nothing. Right, thanks for ruining my holiday, you bastard. <laughs> but that's the great thing about football, isn't it? For every low there is, you know that just round the corner, there's an even lower one. <laughs> Always looking the bright side, eh? <laughs> ah, never mind, look at all that intellectually stimulating talking points that Fitbus gave us. Like, eh, uh, eh, uh, geez, there must be something. Oh, I've got it. Remember that time the Daily Record asked the managers to pick their favorite pop stars? <laughs> <laughs> there were a few shocks there, eh? <laughs> Tommy McLean picked the Eagles. Jim Jeffries picked Neil Diamond. Alec McDonald didn't pick the lap call accordion band. <laughs> And look at all the classic confrontations that we've seen. Oh, aye. Celtic versus Inter Milan. Rangers versus Moscow Dynamo. Aberdeen versus Real Madrid. Golf versus Roxborough. <laughs> Sunis versus Aggie, the tea woman at St. Johnson. <laughs> and the Celtic board versus uh, the rest of the world, really. <laughs> And see, when it comes to officials, the Scottish Football Association is right up there with the Albanias and the Greenlands and the soccer world. <laughs> I'll tell you something else. See, our referees, they're never wrong. Never make a mistake. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. FIFA want to make them professional now. Well, they should. They should get paid a going rate for a job because they're worth every penny. 
especially Big Les Modrum. <laughs> Old Hawkeye himself. Partick Thistle versus Dundee United. <laughs> Paddy Corley, the United striker, gets the ball and he hits it. Whoop! It's a cracker. He scuds it right into the back of a thistle net. Hits the stanchion, bounces back out again. So a thistle defender, he picks the ball up. <laughs> hands it to his goalkeeper. <laughs> well, it's a goal, isn't it? <laughs> well, at least it's a penalty, eh? <laughs> no! Big Les is mincing up the track, waving, play on, play on! <laughs> out, out in the track side, Jim McLean has gone off his head. His face is like a psychopathic beetroot. His specks have all steamed up, and his hair's gone up and down like a pedal bun line. <laughs> He's got a corner flag like a harpoon. And he's after us linesman, and you can guess where he wants to shovel. <laughs> now, meanwhile, in the Thistle dugout, John Lambie is displaying solidarity with a fellow manager by turning his head away. <laughs> then pushing himself laughing. <laughs> the United fans, well, no, the Thistle fans, really, they're no quite so diplomatic. They're flicking the vickies at the Dundee United crowd. <laughs> who by this time are starting to turn ugly. Well, they were always ugly, but you know what I mean, don't they? Oh, the United fans are threatening to invade the pitch. All 15 of them. <laughs> All hell's about to break loose. The riot squad are going to arrive. So Paul Sturrock, he decides to hide the United fans inside his court. <laughs> Meanwhile, Papa Doc McLean is still remonstrating. <laughs> still remonstrating with Big Les before and a fat peak turning and challenging the entire enclosure to a square goal. <laughs> and dozens are injured in the rush to take him on. <laughs> and that's all because our referees never make a mistake. Well, I suppose the referee has just got to call it as he sees it. Only that time, he didn't see anything. So what he saw, he didn't actually see. Well, could you not just come out and say that? I suppose it's that veil of secrecy that surrounds referees that makes us suspicious of them. Veil? They're like an apron, if you ask me. <laughs> Do you remember the Jim McCluskey of Stuart affair? The other paranoid Celtic fans were so suspicious they actually put a private detective on the man. And here was he no discovered at the scene of an orange walk. But was he actually in the walk? No, he was too drunk to walk. <laughs> he was doing the orange crawl along the pavement. You see, that's the one big blight in our game, eh? I mean, well, apart from bigotry, religion should never come into football. No. I couldn't agree with you, Mayor. Ah, wait a minute, here the team's coming on. We give them a cheer on. I'm on. Die, 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 you hunters, pretty dogs, come on here, dogs! Daniel O'Donnell, you bus! <laughs> oh, eh, no offence. None taken. Away back to the Vatican, ya Mickey Tim loving every minute of the royal family's agony, ya bead rattlers. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> no problem. Right, so much for our team now for the opposition. <laughs> Who is it we're playing? Wraith Rovers. <laughs> Away back to Wraith, ya Mickey Hun Tim Plody. Love every minute of Daniel O'Donnell's misery, you bastards! Oh, hey, 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 the referee. Who's a mason? Who's a mason? Who's a mason in the black? Who's oh, a... The referee is Mr. 
Brendan Communions from Colt Bridge. <laughs> who's a knight? Who's a knight? Who's a knight of St. Columbus in the black? Who's a knight of St. Columbus in the black? Ah, uh, uh, look at that, look at that. Here a wee mascot. Five-year-old Paul Smith. What a big day for him, eh? A day that wee boy will never forget. Aye, we'll make sure of that. <laughs> Hey, shut us! <laughs> Do you not know your jersey's not supposed to hang out a bottom of your pants? <laughs> and by the way, the nurse is coming to school tomorrow to check your head for bumps. <laughs> then she's going to give you a jag with a blunt needle and cover your fizzog with purple ointment. <laughs> and even though your teeth just need a wee polish, a dentist is going to give you gas. <laughs> That's just to be rotten! And the next time you forget your kit, the gym teacher's gonna make you play at British Bulldog in your vest and wise. That shows the lassies will all laugh at you. Your mother's a bun. <laughs> your feather's a walloper. <laughs> your dog's a... Oh, yeah. He's greeting. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, if he can't handle the big occasion, he shouldn't be in the pitch. God, I went back to the nursery. <laughs> What's the matter? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just that... Well, see, every time I see an emotionally savaged Wayne being dragged off a park like that, I always get a bit emotional, you know? Because for me, that's what Scottish papa's all about. How'd you make that out? Well, well you see the psychological mauling we just gave that boy, right? Well, that'll cause him to grow up with a deeply disturbed, pathologically imbalanced brain. So in our own humble way, we have laid the perfect mentality for a Scottish professional football player. <laughs> or a mass murderer. I know this time I thought we just hurled abuse at them because we were rotten bastards. Oh, aye, well, that as well, you know. Such a difficult decision for a boy to make, all the same, eh? Maniac or footballer. I suppose you could combine the two and play for Airdrie. <laughs> Mind you, you see, that is what makes Scotland so unique as a footballing nation. You know, but look, see, but all the other countries, right? I mean, they can have all the ability, all the class, all the natural skill. But they don't breed the nutters like we do. <laughs> the bampots. Or as the press call them, the personality players. <laughs> that is what Scottish football's all about. No, no, no. Being Scottish, that's what Scottish football's all about. Being paranoid, self-destructive, self-pitying. Aye, it was like I say. <laughs> I tell you whose fault it is that we are Scottish. Who's? The English. <laughs> They're what Scottish football is not all about. How do you make that out? Well, oh, without oversimplifying a, well, a highly complex issue, the reasons are threefold. One, they're English. Two, they come from England. And three, that bastard Jimmy Hill. <laughs> they make us feel Scottish. Look, leaving aside that, well, look, the pointless paranoia and dwelling in the past. Ask yourself this. See when it comes to the World Cup qualifying sections, how come they always get the easy teams? How come we get the hard teams? And how come they never get banned from Europe for the way they behaved after Culloden? <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. So being mental, paranoid, uh, self-destructive, self-pitying, and dwelling in the past, that's what Scottish football's all about, eh? Aye. Right. Well, no. Well, look, my base, hmm? look, let's hear what the magnificent monotone has to say about it. Who? William Michael Varney. Oh. When you're talking personality. <laughs> you're talking person with a bit of nality.
someone whom the gods or Ian Archer have deemed special. A unique being with charisma and talent. Unless that personality is a Scottish personality. For in this footballing nation of ours, the word personality has come to be the recognized shorthand for 100% pure mental. <laughs> then there is the question of nationality. Being Scottish is the only thing wrong with being a Scotsman. For to be Scottish is to be possessed by the demons of self-destruction. Scottishness being a towering triumph to the power of positive thinking. A total conviction in your lack of self-belief. <laughs> a conviction crucial to the progressive stagnation of our game, whose absence might have altered the course of our history. With self-belief in 1885, it might have been Arbroath 36, Bonacord 37. <laughs> In 1967, it would have been Berwick Rangers 1, Glasgow Rangers 5. Yeah. At Wembley in 1961, it could have been England 9, Scotland 4. <laughs> but as Scots, we have no option but to treat victory and defeat the same. Because for every Bannockburn, there is a Culloden, a Flodden, a Glencoe, a Hamden, a Wembley, a Costa Rica, a Peru, an Iran, and an Argentina. Tremendous, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm absolutely delighted, you know. <laughs> I mean, we went and he went to the Argentina. I mean, you know what I mean? We were a world class side, you know. I mean, no, actually, I mean, that's what I'm classed a Scottish said, you know. <laughs> but she's actually rubbish. <laughs> but actually, I mean, I'm just delighted, you know, because, I mean, I, I was never worried, you know. I, I knew that when the chips were down, Scotland always rises like a Felix from the ashes, you know. <laughs> it's just that when I left in a Peru game, you know, the chips weren't really so much down as trampled into a lobby carpet, you know. <laughs> William Bud Johnson. <laughs> the outlaw dopey wills. <laughs> a one-off, a character, a true personality player. He did a cold. Normally he'd take some pills. About four cans. <laughs> but on this occasion, he sensibly opted for some banned tablets, and his place in soccer's Hall of Shame was secured. I couldn't believe it, no. <laughs> See what I saw is urine sample. I mean, it looked just like a pint of lager, you know. It was all we could do to stop me Joe Harper from drinking it, you know. That's the wind, that's the hell, you know, I mean. I mean, no, we bud for idol. We bud was no angel, you know. But, I mean, he was no saint either. He was just your typical average Scottish bam pop ball player. 
who's loyal is we're torn between, you know, the Scottish national team and the Scottish and Newcastle breweries. <laughs> I mean, just ask Dennis Law. Well, you know, it's so true, you know, because um, <laughs> on the international scene, right, um, well, you know, my, my lodges were torn, you know, they were torn. Between Scotland, right, the country of my birth, England, the country where I live, and Albania, the language that I speak, you know. <laughs> so Isn't that right, Ali? Ah, oh, tremendous dishes. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted, you know. But Dennis, I still maintain that we were never given the credit that we deserved, you know. I mean, okay, we were humiliated, <laughs> ridiculed. Gubbed. <laughs> but we gave the nation the opportunity to wallow in self-pity and a brilliant excuse to get pissed. <laughs> but you know, never mind the 70s, never mind the 70s. I mean, what about the 60s, eh? We had some marvellous characters back then, you know. Oh, yeah, we did. That's where I had the reactions of a mongoose. Not just the hairstyle. But, you know, I mean, there was the lawman, right? Who was me? And then there was the law unto himself man, who was Jim Baxter. <laughs> he knew the, knew the thought about money. <laughs> I mean, we were in it for the money. We were in it to compete with the Crems, the Gambles, the Johnsons. Good what baby sessions they were. <laughs> We Jimmy Jinky, we Jimmy Jinky, boy could he dribble, could he dribble. He couldn't row, but he could dribble. <laughs> and Tommy Gemmell, mine own time, he hit the bar, nearly broke his nose after 30 years. <laughs> but I'll tell you now, see what I say nowadays to players like me is, it's going to be like me. Train, 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 get yourself fit. Because that way you can run down to the pub faster. <laughs> But you know, when you're talking to someone who, uh, who shared a hotel room with Billy Bremner, right, and a hotel room minibar with Bestie, when he was at his worsty, you know, uh, today's footballer is, is far too professional, is far too dedicated, and far too stupid to, uh, well, to bevy as much as we did, and get away with it. Apart from, say, maybe, uh, Big Duncan Ferguson, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I bet you Jim McLean, right? The I am jolly of Scottish football, right? <laughs> I bet you he had a few problems there, ain't you, Jim? Oh. <laughs> you know, this whole Duncan Ferguson affair, it, it really affected me. <laughs> I was miserable, <laughs> melancholic, depressed, and that's why I hated selling them, because it made me so happy. <laughs> but honestly, the press and the medias have grossly exaggerated the antics of big, mad dog, donkey. <laughs> Aye, that's right, Ken. See, a comfy barrack bun, like. <laughs> and I'm affected by the history of the place, Ken. See how just before the battle, an English knight tried to chub Rab the Bruce. But Rab lumped him on the napper with his axe. Well, I've always had a great affinity with him. No Rab the Bruce, the bloke got hit in the head, like. Mind you, all that happened a long time ago in 1314. And that's about a quarter past one, I think. <laughs> oh, 
God. We done everything for that boy. 40 year contract. <laughs> 50 pence a week pocket money. Steel toe cap trainers. Club straight jacket. And an executive penthouse bed set in Dundee. <laughs> right, well, we've taken legal advice, like, and my agent says we're going to take Jim McLean to the European Court of Human Rights. Because in this day and age, no one should have the right to force anyone to live in Dundee. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? I mean, people say I was too harsh on the boy, but that's just rubbish. <laughs> okay, I admit to in the past taking the odd Maddie with Duncan, but only, only when he did something to annoy me, like, like being there. <laughs> but now, well now, I feel I know the boy, and I would never question his ability. I'd never underestimate his potential, and I'd never stand behind him in a taxi queue. <laughs> but that's all in the past, now that he's joined them. <laughs> I suppose he'll be all right once Walter gives him the do's and the don'ts. The do's and the don'ts, bro, did you hear that, Coisty? They keep pigeons at Ibrox. Ah, uh, well. His Dundee United career set the heather on fire. His Scotland career set the hotel furniture on fire. <laughs> Maybe moving to Glasgow will sort him out. No, I'll be fine. I'll just knuckle down and soon achieve the lifelong ambition I'd had for the last two years. To be top scorer at Victoria's nightclub. As it turned out, he was fine. Obviously, the code of conduct at Ibrox is helping him mature. Either that or his court appearance put the shiters up on him. <laughs> But to be honest, I think the media has got us all out of disproportion. <laughs> I mean, Duncan Ferguson is like Cliff Richard compared to Chick Charnley. <laughs> Mind you, Hannibal Lecter's like Cliff Richard <laughs> compared to Chick Charnley. So they didn't want me. Never mind. Revenge is savoury. <laughs> Seen much of Gordon Smith lately? I have. I eat my chips. <laughs> Last I do me a bottle of Tizer. <laughs> now I fancy a nice plate of homemade soup made from a nice bit of juicy, Jimmy, bone. I didn't care what you did with Chick Charlie. <laughs> Things got so desperate, we even thought about giving him drugs to calm him down. <laughs> Valium? LSD. <laughs> Glasgow, where life is taken almost as seriously as football itself. The 10th of July, 1989. A date that will live in infamy. Glasgow Rangers parade their latest signing, Morris Johnson. <laughs> the club's first known wooden Catholic signing. 
of modern times. The country was plunged into a cauldron of confusion, a cesspit of silliness, a chanty of chaos. <laughs> As the fans, by the sash divided, united in their disbelief. But Glasgow Rangers Fatma Club have seen Morris Johnson, that Morris Johnson, the Morris Johnson, it Morris Johnson, right? That's it, oh, that's it, that's scrub. That is me and Rangers, finito, right? Right, the hat's gone back, the scarf's gone back. Hey, 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 see that, see that era? The season ticket's away, and see that tattoo of King Billy in my arm? What? Right. The arm's coming off! <laughs> no, 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 no. Right, it's nothing to do with bigotry. <laughs> or the fact that he is an ex-Celtic idolater, right? It's to do with... meddling. Meddling with the unmeddleable, right? It's to do with traditions, right? It's traditional traditions. I mean, I'm no bigot, but no surrender! <laughs> but they had. <laughs> While on the other side of the barricades, the subject being contemplated was high treason. A mere five weeks previously, the Celtic faithful had hail, hailed the peroxide prodigal's return <laughs> as the second coming. But now that the chance of crucify him had died down, it was time for thoughtful reflection. No, you see, what, what you've got to understand when you talk about Morris Johnson <clears throat> is that you're talking about something that hasn't well, fully evolved. <laughs> something that's not quite human. <laughs> now, don't, don't, get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I have always said that Rangers should sign Catholics. But daddy ones, no ones that can play! <laughs> However, that's it. Eh? Evil has triumphed. Good has been vanquished. There we have conclusive proof. There is no God. <laughs> Thank you, Archbishop Winning. What made Johnson's about face all the more surprising, or indeed galling, was his behaviour in a certain Skull Cup final. On being sent off against Rangers, he committed the provocative act of blessing himself. His Celtic teammates were shocked that he could still remember how to. <laughs> in the ensuing Ramy, a referee Syme was scalped on the melt by a 50 pence coin. <laughs> then there was an invasion of the pitch by the Celtic board who were looking for the 50 pence. <laughs> Upon such moments was built the legend of Mojo, which plumbed the heights of notoriety that day 
the inglorious 10th of July, when Rangers paraded their stunned acquisition before a press conference. <laughs> Morris, Morris, uh, Morris, how does it feel to have signed for Rangers? Well, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just delighted because <laughs> Rangers are the only club I've ever wanted to play for. <laughs> Graham, Graham, Mr. Soonis, Your Majesty, how difficult a decision was it to sign Morris Johnson? Can I just say something here? <laughs> About Morris Johnson. <laughs> He's a better player than I first thought. He's quite simply a quality player who became available. And this club will always be interested in signing quality players, especially when it really stuffs Celtic. Yeah, but isn't it also true that perhaps because of his reputation, he wasn't wanted by any other clubs. I don't know what reputation you're talking about. <laughs> All I know is, he was wanted in Italy to play for Torino. He was wanted in France to play for Montpellier. And he was wanted in Hollywood to play Bart Simpson. <laughs> Morris, eh, Morris, Morris, to be honest, Morris, in many, many ways, aren't you just a line we shite? <laughs> very much. <laughs> Do I not know you? I'm Billy McNeil. I sing you for Celtic. <laughs> no, no, I don't know you. No, uh, you'd better speak to my agent. <laughs> May I be allowed to speak? I am King Bill McMurdo. <laughs> Agent Orange. <clears throat> I can confirm that after meetings with the law lords, that the law lords have confirmed that the contract which Morris signed was inadmissible as evidence because I, all right, I'll do it. written on the back of a bookie's line <laughs> isn't legally binding. Uh, aye. I, I was really pleased with the ruling that I wasn't breaking a contract. I was only breaking my word. <laughs> In the end, Morris Johnson's career at Ibrox was relatively short, relatively successful, not exactly incident-free and ended in a blaze of indifference when he signed for Everton reserves. <clears throat> <laughs> With the promise that he would never play football in Scotland again. <laughs> this time, at least, he kept his word. Because when he came back, he signed for hearts. <laughs> but let us not forget the legacy he left us. Let us not forget the man who didn't so much rise above bigotry as crawl beneath it. Nor the contribution he made to the ecumenical movement by being Scotland's first Fenian orange bastard. <laughs> For those who know it, no explanation is necessary. 
for those who don't, no explanation will suffice. It's been written about and sung about, glorified and vilified. It's historical and hysterical, cynical and sinister, yet it's claimed our game needs it. It's two majestic dinosaurs locked in an epic battle to win. It's two drunk men wrestling in the gutter. It's the old firm. <laughs> Hi, Jim White here, and welcome to... Welcome to Scotsport Extra Wine. <laughs> John McCrae will be along later, which means you get your racing tips straight from the horse's arse. <laughs> but first, tonight, on the eve of the big old firm match, we can exclusively reveal <laughs> that the first panzer division of the Lark Call Accordion Band <laughs> has surrounded Coat Bridge. <laughs> the leader of Scotland's Catholics, Peter Grant, has been unable to secure assistance from the Vatican. <laughs> so he's done the next best thing, called a meeting of Monklands District Council. <laughs> Reports of atrocities are flooding in, Jerry. Yes, that's, uh, that's absolutely right. <laughs> I, in fact, can exclusively reveal <laughs> that crack boys brigade union units are forcing captives to listen to Bible readings, <laughs> while hordes of ninja altar boys are offloading their guilt complexes on innocent passers-by. The village of Croy has declared itself a Hun-free zone. <laughs> and has launched a nuclear strike on Kilwinning. <laughs> so, carnage, bloodshed and ethnic cleansing. That special old firm atmosphere is building up nicely. <laughs> Certainly plenty of food for thought there. <laughs> to be regurgitated by Gordon McQueen. <laughs> oh, Dref... Dref Definitely. <laughs> it's a game where the players give all they've got to give until, <laughs> until there's no more game left to be govved. <laughs> and of course they've went and gone and give some more game and that's their govved all govved. And uh, well, the flo uh, fl flans, flan <laughs> fans, the fans hate each other, so the atmosphere is quite splash, splash. Fl Horrible. Jay, would you agree with that? Well, rampant bigotry, religious intolerance, vile suspicion and bitter, bitter hatred. Yes, Scotland needs a strong old firm. <laughs> it's a matter that needs to be addressed by a top reporter. But sports scene prefer to use Chick Young. <laughs> The Elmer Fudd of Scottish football.
Thank you, Jerry McNee. The voice of a football. <laughs> yes, this is me, Chick Young, standing where I am, which is here. <laughs> Poised to interview two men who know the old firm upside down and inside out. Current Ibrox Imperial Wizard, Walter Smith, His Majesty. The Great Waldo. <laughs> Prince of Orange. King of Kiora. Savior of the Sash. Scourge of the Thames. Supreme Architect of the Glasgow Rangers, the Jazz, the Teddy Bears. And Brady. Oi. Liam, it's been a pretty traumatic time for you. I'm sure you'd like nothing better than to just forget about it and get on with your life. Yeah, that's right. Well, Liam, no chance. What a start to a managerial career. And yet, I remember so well that day in 1991 when the smoke blew out the chimney at Celtic Park. <laughs> and it was announced that you, Liam Brady, would be donning the manager's vestments. But since then, nothing. <laughs> Zilch. Sod all. Not a tosser. First Celtic manager to win hee-haw. <laughs> and consequently, some of my less charitable colleagues might say you're therefore, in some eyes, a haddie, <laughs> a chib, a diddy, a failure, a miserable failure, a clown, a dud, a reject, a balloon, a monkey, a disgrace to humanity. Liam, nice to see you. Yeah, well, I'd like to point out to them that the last four seasons haven't been entirely empty at Celtic Park. Since I arrived, Ireland have won the Eurovision Song Contest <laughs> twice. Liam, uh, without going on too much about Celtic, uh, how come they're so rubbishy? <laughs> Pathetic, dismal, hopeless, absolutely duff, mince, pure pish. <laughs> Especially when compared with the mighty Rangers. <laughs> As a St. Mim fan, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Yeah, well, uh, I put that down to a loss of form at crucial parts of the season. Namely, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Off the park, two things haven't been going too kindly for Celtic, but uh, without being too forthright in my misgivings, uh, what a shambles. <laughs> it's a disaster. You're skint, rooked, well and truly in the grubber, canvas slang! <laughs> Jack and Ori, Jack and Ori. Yeah, well, uh, things might seem a bit uncertain at the moment. But whatever happens, I think the fans will notice one major improvement. Already the architects are planning an extensive 
10 million pound facelift on Tony Mowbray. <laughs> but what about that Celtic board? Uh, the three stooges meet the four horses' asses of the apocalypse <laughs> to form the intransigent seven. And what will the outcome be? Timageddon? Yeah, well, to be fair to the board, they are trying very hard to raise cash, you know. I mean, at ha Halloween there, for example, and they organised a fundraising event. And what was that? Well, they all went out guising. Of course, uh, you started the new season with your new backroom staff. Uh, tell me, was it difficult convincing Big Joe Jordan to come after the Baru and join Celtic? <laughs> oh, no. Ah, oh, Joe's a Celtic man through and through. He had no hesitation in joining the club, even though it did mean a drop in wages. Well, he's back in the big money again. And finally, Liam, without twisting the knife anymore, would I be right in telling you that it was after the League Cup semi-final at Ibrox against the glorious Rangers when once again it was a case of fail, fail, the Celts are here, <laughs> that you finally decided to excommunicate yourself? Yeah, well, after that game, I think you're right, I did notice a significant change on the fans' attitude towards me. The Celtic fans were saying Brady must go. No, no, the Rangers fans were saying Brady must stay. <laughs> well, Liam, good luck with your life, with whatever you do now. If you'll excuse me, I'm away now to support St. Mirren. Yeah, well, there he goes, Chick Young. That's the man with the best eyesight in Scotland. Well, you'd have to have to support St. Mirren from the middle of the Copeland Road stand. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, things haven't gone right, you know, they haven't gone right for me, but never mind. The old Irish saying pulled me through. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, get out the bloody door. <laughs> mind you, the thing with being with Celtic is you're always compared to Rangers, you know. But I have to say, I've got nothing but admiration for Walter Smith. I mean, what he's achieved in the last two seasons, it's, it's got me mystified. Where does he get those, you know, that spirit he's instilled in the team? Where does he get the talented young players? And where does he get those sleeveless cardigans? <laughs> Did Walter, great to see you. You're looking very smart. Ah, uh, cheers. Um, <laughs> always trying, like, you know, particularly smart. Uh, <laughs> seems I got a better deal with Ralph Slater than you got with Stuart Slater. Oh. <laughs> Walter, listen, I meant to say, listen now, on behalf of all the true Celtic fans, Thanks for losing 2-1 to Levski, Sofia. <laughs> if it hadn't been for that result, it would still have to listen to Tiger Tim, you know. <laughs> oh, no bother. In fact, uh, as that late winner sailed into the back of our net, I remember saying to Archie Knox, ah, well, never mind. At least we've cheered up the Celtic fans. <laughs> I have to say to Walter, that is some squad you've been over at Ibrox. Well, when I used to look in that Rangers dugout, it was frightening. That's probably because Davy Dodds was looking back at me. Ah, uh, no, cheers, Sam. Last season was particularly good, you know. For Rangers, in particular. But, uh, obviously, I have to say, you know, ultimately it was a... A disappointing and worrying year because it, well, at this club, you know, the priority will always be the stability of the House of Windsor.
And talking of families with uh, divine rights, uh, how's the Celtic board? Ah. <laughs> Absolutely great, brilliant. I mean, last season they organised the jungle's last stand, you know. Fancy dress, free captions, competition, uh, free ginger. That beats winning trophies any day, eh? <laughs> Listen, how are the Ibrooks board? Oh, you know, the board got on particularly well with the players, you know. Uh, the chairman, David Murray, he helps them with business matters. Uh, Donald Finlay QC advises them in legal affairs. And uh, Ian Skelly has given Ian Ferguson tips on how to buy a second-hand car. <laughs> Well, Liam, oh. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I'm away to ask Chick Young his advice and when to make my next move to sign Gordon Jury. Right, Just see you later, then. <laughs> oh, Walter! Walter, sorry, I meant to say, hard lines get knocked out the European Cup again, you know. But uh, listen, the next time you're over at Celtic Park, I'm sure if you ask Lou McCary, he'd give you a wee hold of theirs. <laughs> But believe it, or believe it not, there is just a bit more to Scottish football than sectarianism. Occasionally, commercialism gets in the way. Or does it? Maybe these two isms are simply opposite faces on the same double-sided coin. Living off each other in a mutually exploitive parasitical pact which bleeds the fans dry of their tolerance and their cash. For there is no shortage of inducements for the punter with a few pounds he can't really afford to spare. There is the ever-blossoming video market with a wide variety of similar tapes to choose from. There are videos about teams, like the St. Mirren story, The darling buddies of dismay. <laughs> and there are videos about players, like the fly and the kebab shop wall documentary on Ian Durant. <laughs> In bed with Madonna. And for the intellectual football fanatic, whatever he might be, there are books, as reviewed by Radio Clyde's supremo, Alex Dixon. Hello. <laughs> Alex Dixon here. Now, if you, like me, enjoy... <laughs> well, let's a racy read. Now, uh, uh, well, a thought-provoking publication. Uh, well, how can I put it? How can I put it? Uh, an, an intellectually stimulating story. Then, well, now, the book for you is Selected Nursery Rhymes by Jock Wallace. <laughs> um, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown because he wasn't fit, he had no character, and the boy didn't believe in himself. I, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Have a... If you're more inclined to, well, well, let's say the classics, right? If you're the sort of person who... who likes your books with... Mm, with words in them, right? <laughs> then, the masterpiece for you is the stunningly, imaginatively titled My Story by Ali McCoist that critics have raved not bad, the times. <laughs> Quite good, the observer. Aravich, the guardian. <laughs> James Cleffins, what a book! The Sunday Post. <laughs> Superb, better than Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, or any other bloke that writes. The Rangers News. <laughs> Satanic rantings of the Antichrist. <laughs> the Celtic View. <laughs> Can I just say something here? <laughs> About Ali McCoist. 
He's a better author than that first stop. Yeah, for sure. We had our disagreements in the past, but I bear him no grudges or no hard feelings. Is that explaining my new book? That bastard McCoy. Well, personally, I don't like the idea of players writing books because they only fill other players' heads full of ideas. Well, the ones that can read that is... Yeah, but come on now, Jimbo, come on. We, you know, we have to accept, right, that... Uh, well, we have to, you know, because today's professional footballer, right, you know, he, well, he can secure his future by investing in, well, you know, in investments, right? Which suit is personality, right? Now, you get Charlie Nicholas, right? You get Charlie Nicholas Selig, right? He's invested in the social scene, bought himself a pub. You get Ali McCoy, Super Ali of the Rangers, right? He invested in his hobby. He bought himself a racehorse. And what about we Joe Miller, right? We Joe, right? <laughs> He's invested in property. Bought himself a bouncy castle. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jofus? <laughs> no, it's not me. You stop the man me. I'm a mature man, you, and if you don't believe me, I'll shoot you with my marching death ray gun. Pew, 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 pew! And then, and then I'll tell my Uncle Bob. May I be allowed to speak again? <laughs> yes, it's me, Uncle Bill McMurdo, the Prince of Dampness. <laughs> Sole representative of Mr. Wee Joe Miller. I can confirm that Jofus is all grown up now. <laughs> because for the last two months, he's been going to bed with the light off. <laughs> can I also just say that it's my job to ensure my clients make as much money as possible, to blow on booze and bugs then to tour the country holding question and answer sessions with the fans. Isn't that right, George Best? Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, I'm going to talk about the decade 1966 to 76. So if anyone can remember what I did, <laughs> well, when they let me know. <laughs> so, as we run down the tunnel of life towards the field of hope, only to fall on our jaxes in the puddle of destiny. Rest easy in the knowledge. We are not the first, and by no means the last, to know how this feels. <whistles> That's a half-time whistle. <laughs> hey, listen, there, 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 up the tunnel. Hey, by the way, that was rubbish. Oh, crap, pure push. Putrid, rancid garbage. What's the score anyway? I don't know, I wasn't watching it. Come on. Here are macaroon bars and experiment chingum. Here are macaroon bars and experiment chingum. Right, I should start it, we better go on. Eh, uh, I see Justin Fashion who stole with hearts. I'd heard he was off to Italy to join ACDC Milan. <laughs> I must say that new video. Clint Eastwood as Morris Johnson in Unforgiven. <laughs> hey, listen to this. Uh, following his performance in the League Cup final, Keith Wright could be in line for a place on the Scotland bench. Craig Brown sees the big striker as the perfect sub because he can dive, dive, dive. <laughs> we are really lucky in this country, you know, having so many journalists who know exactly what the readers want. 
No one of them known as fans with typewriters. Well, like fannies with typewriters. <laughs> But you learn so much from these experts. I mean, look at the whistler, giving you all the latest football gossip four weeks after you've heard it in the pub. <laughs> and I bet you many of the arguments been solved by Bob Cramps's Now You Know column in the Evening Times. Uh, calling Big Numpty in the Clarkin Bar. <laughs> in answer uh, to your question, the high high ended below the bully wee and above the red lichties only 38 times I can recall. However, in 1922, <laughs> the dry books finished above all three, but beneath the sewer plumes and on equal points with the mucky shucks. Uh, we'll get back to you on your question, Re. Where did Hibernian get the nickname? Hibs. <laughs> and get a fascinating insight into the mind of the modern day footballer in the Sun's weekly lifestyle feature. Name? Stephen Bughead Toker. But my teammates have a funny nickname for me. Stevie. <laughs> Team. Dumbarton Reserves. D-O-B. No, I'm a Catholic. <laughs> Married? No, but I've got hundreds of birds. <laughs> Favourite TV show? Panorama. Or any other cookery program. <laughs> Favourite comedian? Brian Martin of Motherwell. <laughs> Biggest thrill in football? Being on the bench for Dumbarton Reserves. <laughs> Biggest disappointment in football? Being on the bench for Dumbarton Reserves. <laughs> If you weren't a footballer, what would you be? On the bench for Dumbarton Reserves. <laughs> and if you still want answers, then you can always watch Sport in Question. Or perhaps Sport in Stupid Question would be a more appropriate title. The man who coined the phrase, you don't learn anything if you don't ask questions, had obviously never seen this program. <laughs> For the answer most people would like to know is, where do they get the questions? But an education it is, watching former headmaster McPherson prove himself a class apart when it comes to schooling the audience in the art of patronizing both punter and pundit with equal arrogance and a technique the doyen of drivel perfected on Radio Clyde's Super Scoreboard. <laughs> Well, what a cup tie this is! And it's Rangers sweeping majestically forward as Stuart McCall pushes a long ball forward. And it's amazing that even though McCall is small, <laughs> when he's got the ball, he looks quite tall. <laughs> oh, and there's a neat touch from McCall, and there's a glorious little goal from Rangers! Oh! You know, as one looks around oneself at Ibrook Stadium, <laughs> this magnificent all-seater outdoor lodge <laughs> is 
And, and you see how omniscient the team are. Well, I put it to you, Davy Proven, as an ex-Celtic man, does that get to you? Well, Archie, hello, Archie. Um... <laughs> to be perfectly honest, Archie, uh... yes, it does. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, with Rangers totally destroying Airdrie 1-0, Let's go over to Love Street and check Young. <laughs> yes, this is me, Chick Young, standing back where I was, which is over there. In the town of Mirren. Where my beloved St. Buddies brilliantly gubbed some mob from the East Coast 2 0. With goals from new young teenage goal scoring sensation uh, Bobby Lavatry, uh, who got one, uh, and the other three scored by oh, Cockles Wilson, uh, Tommy Bryceland, and oh, Eusebio. <laughs> But of course, the really important question is, how are the Jazz playing, Archie? <laughs> oh, magnificent and majestic. Well within themselves, this Rangers team have gusto. They have a plum. They have just lost a goal. Oh, offside, surely! Uh, I'm afraid, Archie, uh, you can't be offside from a penalty kick. <laughs> so, Jimmy Boyle's goal stands, and uh oh, I'm afraid we've got a bit of trouble on the touchline. Uh, the management team are out on the track, obviously furious about that penalty goal, and oh dear, Alex McDonald has just attacked Jimmy Boyle. So with the police now restoring calm to the elderly bench, let's take the roads and miles to Dundee and Dick Donnelly. Ah, uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> yes, uh, Dick Donnelly here. <laughs> At a rather Dreek and Drusley bench park, Dundee for this dramatic Dundonian derby between Dundee and Dundee United. Still no goals to report, no incidents, no corners, no shies, in fact, no teams, because the match I've just been told is being played at Tanadice. So you'll have no idea what the teams are, Dick? Well, actually, David, surprisingly, I do. The teams in this Dundee, Dundee United clash are Dundee and Dundee United. <laughs> and I can tell you, David, the latest score is nothing each. <laughs> in a dour, dull, defensive game played in atrocious conditions with no skill or craft on display. A terrible advert for football but still not as terrible as Chick Young and Derek Johnson's current car advert. Ho, 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 let's have a wee looky at all the cars made by Suzuki. <laughs> Welcome back to Super Scoreboard. Uh, now over to Castle Grayskull, where uh, Derek Johnson is with Walter Smith. Walter. That late equaliser, you must be gutted. <laughs> well, you know, obviously I'm particularly disappointed, but uh, you can't take anything away from Erdre. Apart from, well, maybe, you know, their chips and Doc Martens.
Now, recently, Walter, you had your appendix out. Was it dead sore? <laughs> Particularly. <laughs> no. Gonna show your scar then. Well, you know, obviously, you know, there's nothing really to see. OK, Walter, that's what it's all about. <laughs> and finally, Walter, I have to ask, for the fans will want to know what happened to your appendix. Well, obviously, it was just a piece of raw meat that caused pain, you know? So, uh, Alex McDonald has just signed it for Airdrie. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. Different class. And now over to our Celtic correspondent, Hugh Keevens, who's with Paul McStay, one of that rare breed of Celtic players, one who isn't serving out a driving ban. It's been a difficult season. <laughs> It's been a difficult season for everyone concerned at the club, but I put it to you, Captain Paul McStay, that if Celtic had played as they can when they didn't, and hadn't played as they did when they didn't want to, then they wouldn't not be challenging as they could if they were, which they aren't. It's as simple as that. Well, there's a buzz about the place. <laughs> the boys are confident. <laughs> and hopefully we'll win something soon for the fans. <laughs> the arrival of Lou McCarry came as something of a sensation amid some scepticism, but would it be fair to say that it was Lou's positive spirit that has resulted in a spirit of positiveness, <laughs> spiritually positivating the spirit of the team? Or is it more complicated than that? There's a buzz about the place. <laughs> the boys are confident and <laughs> hopefully we'll win something soon for the fans. Thank you, Paul. Now it's back to the studio where I believe our first phone-in phone caller is out there phoning in. So caller out phoning in the phone-in out there. You're through, and what is the point you'd like to make? Uh, right, hello, panel. Right, it's, it's, hello, panel. Hey, uh, panel, uh, light speed check. Hello, call, you're through. <laughs> Jack, now it's about that's great. The Rangers team is keep going on about it, you know. Well, look, can I just say that I think Rangers will equal nine in a row, right? In fact, I think I'll win the league for now to Doomsday. And I blame Alan Davidson and the rest of the blue nosed press, the referees, the linesmen, the SFA, the Scottish League, the media, the Polis, and every other team in Scotland, except the Celtic. <laughs> be be because they all lie down to Rangers. Rangers, the sons of William. Hearts, the cousins of William. <laughs> and Airdrie, the in-laws of William. <laughs> Aberdeen, the sheep shaggers of William. <laughs> Every single one of them, they all I do to them, and you know how, I'll take, because they're all Masons. Can I ask you, Carl, are you by any chance a Celtic fan? <laughs> 
Yes, I am. Well, get it right up you. <laughs> Next caller, please. Hello? 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 We are lovely boys. Hello, check, check. Hey, hey. How's it going, brother? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, check. No, listen, look. Hey. See this? We need a strong Celtic rubbish. <laughs> I mean, where does that come from? <laughs> Who needs a strong Celtic? I don't. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> I loathe them. I despise them. Can I ask you, Colin, are you by any chance a Rangers fan? Yes, I am. Well, carry on. <laughs> right, no, check, right, no, 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 like, like, what I want you to know is, like, like, see that crap skinhead, that Irish skinhead singer birth, right? Her that ripped up the photo of the Pope on the television. What's her name? Hello, caller, uh, yes, caller, well, caller, it's David Proven here, caller, uh. Her name's Sinead O'Connor, but that's not a sporting question. Aye, it is. We want to name our Ranger Supporters Club after her. <laughs> well, yes, it's an interesting new idea, uh, naming your Supporters Club after a figure you particularly admire as they've done with the John F. Kennedy Celtic Supporters Club in Carfin and the Lee Harvey Oswald Ranger Supporters Club in Brogsburg. <laughs> Next caller, uh, you're through to the open line, and what's your question? Uh, hello, I'd like to speak to you, Kevins, please. You are to him, in fact, now speaking unto. <laughs> See, see, you're at it again. I'm at what again? You, you think you're great, Mr. Journalist? Mr. Wordsman? Can I answer the question now, please? I haven't asked you one yet. No, perhaps not in as many words, but in my opinion, and I stress it is only an opinion, you're about to ask me an incredibly stupid question. So, what I'm saying is, I'll save you asking it by telling you right now. You're talking absolute rubbish. Does that answer the question you haven't asked yet? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Thanks very much, Tap. <laughs> hello. Hello, can I speak to the panel, please? Oh, hey, you're too late. It's finished, wee man. Hello, hello, operator, please. Look, I must speak to the phone in. No, listen, I've told you, you're too late. It's finished. Just one mere, just one mere daft question. I'll chuck it for good. Hello, hello, panel. Please, somebody, Andy, please answer me. I'll even speak to Arty McPherson. Oh, jeez, put that phone down. You must be delirious talking to that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. You sure? You want me a cup of tea, you know? Hey, a wee cup of Bovril, swig of Benelins. Ah. Oh. I'm fine, Jen up, I'm all right. I just overdosed in the dopes. <laughs> this is the Radio Clyde equivalent of cold turkey. Cold donkey. Aye, I know what you mean. It's the same as that hollow pain you get deep in your gut when you know the World Cup finals are coming up and Scotland are going to be in them. <laughs> Well, no fears of that happening this time. Aye. Mind you, we better not get too confident with complacency. I mean, no in Scotland, you know, a, bit, a week after we'd blown our World Cup spending money, they discovered that the Italian players had too much testosterone in their blood. The Swiss would have too much Toblerone in their blood. <laughs> They'd get chipped out and we'd qualify by default. Well, I hope not. We have our pride, you know. If we can't go to be gubbed in the finals as section winners or runners-up, then you can forget it. Mind you, I mean, they're in America this year. Oh, it'd be good to go there, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. I, and not just for the football. I mean, you can visit... You can visit all the great battlefields, like Gettysburg, the Alamo, Los Angeles. <laughs> right, and that, that, eh, 
A big fantasy park. What's that called again? Oh, I Cambus Lang World. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Oh, right Rangers man, you know. Is he? Oh, I sure. He was in that film, born on the 12th of July. <laughs> I don't know if I... I... Mind you, it's all very well, but I mean, what's the actual fit we're going to be like, you know? I know. Sometimes you just can't help wondering where the game is going. And we're not the only ones. Just ask Dennis Law. Well, you know, I'm... I think it's an outrage and, uh, and a diabolical liberty that the World Cup Finals are being held in a country like the American States of United, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, come on, right? Come on. <laughs> they don't even like our beautiful game, you know? I mean, what is a national sport enemy? What is it? American football? Baseball? Starting fires? <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Alan Hansen? Well, it's not just the fact that they don't give a monkeys about football. <laughs> there are other problems, too. I mean, look at Davey He. He went over to manage a top women's team, Tampax Bay Rowdies. <laughs> But at the end of the day, he had to come back from America because he couldn't learn the language. But, you know, come on, Alan, you know, I mean, as I say, his language, right, and the ability to communicate, you know, really that important, you know, in football, because uh, I've managed without it. <laughs> you better believe it's important. Just ask foreigners like Peter Huistra. Hi, it's Peter Hoostra here. <laughs> the Dutch cap that does score. Um, <laughs> for sure, uh, language is important uh, in football, especially in Scotland, where among the players, some are Scottish, some are English, some are Irish, but most are rubbish. Um, <laughs> but you know, there is great poetry in football, uh, none of it written by Jim Leishman. Is ya who young bugger, Sarah? <laughs> Wallace Wallace, get to France. <laughs> Away from all your troubles. Sing a song for Europe, all about hearts, called We're Forever Blowing Doubles. <laughs> Mickey Thomas, for shagging, was stabbed in the ass. <laughs> now he has to wear a nappy. But who's screwing who at Marseille Football Club? Who's Bernard on Tappy? <laughs> but is our game really in a mess? Don't ask me, ask Graham Sunes. Can I just say something here? <laughs> About Scottish football. Personally, I still happen to think that Scottish football was the best football currently been played anywhere in Scotland. <laughs> but this 44-game league programme's a killer. We've got to reconstruct the leagues into Premier League of two. <laughs> Rangers and Rangers Reserves. <laughs> and the rest can do what they want. Because without taking them away from the Falkirks, the Dunfermlands, or the Arbroaths of this world, who gives a toss about them? <laughs> Apart from, I suppose, Danny McGrain.
Well, Graham, I'm afraid I have to say a plan for league reconstruction. A totally unworkable. It would just be a fiasco. A complete disaster. So, submit them to the SFA and they'll probably adopt them. But if you don't, if you don't believe me, ask Kenny Douglas, because he puts that a lot more succinctly than me. Could be. <laughs> Could not be. <laughs> Maybe it's I. <laughs> Maybe it's no. <laughs> Maybe it's Alex Ferguson. Well, I agree with Kenny, I think. <laughs> OK, it's easy to criticise. <laughs> but there's a lot to be positive about, too. <laughs> Tactically, Scottish teams are much more aware now. Aberdeen have abandoned the flat back four, and they've now got a spare man at the back to mark Brian Irving. And uh, what, what about last season? Rangers, European run. All down to traditional Scottish fighting qualities, as demonstrated by McCall, McCoist, and Makayachenko. <laughs> so generally, I think Scottish football is in good shape, thanks to the divine wisdom of the SFA and its inspiring leader, the God Fairy. <laughs> what have I ever done? <laughs> what have I ever done that they should treat me so disrespectfully? <laughs> Come to think of it, what have I ever done? How can you say there's anything wrong with the current league setup? Look at all the excitement on the last day of the season at Rugby Park, when it was finally decided who joins Wraith Rovers in being relegated from the Premier League next season. <laughs> Football is a funny game. Just ask Jiminy Nickel. Come here, there's more. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. There's more. See, Parry Kessler, I've got a new kind of code of conduct. Got a new code of conduct for the players. If the players must behave, the manager goes in a hop with them. It's called the silence of the Lambies. <laughs> now, come here, come here, come here. There's more, there's more. Okay. What about Ivan Golak, eh? He's really got his finger in the pulse of Dundee and Ivan, hasn't he? He thinks Christian Daly's a religious newspaper. <laughs> but even worse, he thinks Davy Bowman's a football player. <laughs> yeah, no, come here, come here, there's more, there's more. Yeah. Cowden Beef, what about Cowden Beef? Eh? What a team they are, they're terrible. Their nickname's the Blue Brazilians, but they've had to change it to the Chippendales because there's so many pricks in the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's more, there's more now, okay. What a team, now, Cowden Beef, it's a great wee place, isn't it? It's a bit quiet, though. I pass through it in the road through to here, get a sheep tied to a pole, called it a leisure centre. <laughs> There's no more, right? That's all. <laughs> but if the press and radio is the bread and butter of our game, then television 
is the walls Vianetta. <laughs> Where puddings get their just desserts. From an ever-expanding menu of not just traditional fare, but now, Italian dishes too. Goretto! And welcome back to Gazzetto Football Italia. <laughs> and providing the expert analysis this week, Ray Wilkins. Hello, Ray. Hello, Peter. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, some fascinating matches in prospect this weekend. The sellout derby matches between Sampdoria and Genoa, Inter Milan versus AC Milan, and of course the big one, Paul Gascoigne versus bottom of the league, Reggiana. Yes, well, I was just wondering, Ray, did you happen to see the Italy-Scotland match a few weeks back? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, what a catalogue of disasters, eh? <laughs> a catalogue, indeed. Uh, Brian Gunn went down for that first one in instalments. Um, <laughs> then a, a defence-splitting pass by Baggio, who incidentally is nicknamed Steve Fulton by the Juventus fans. <laughs> That's, you know, set up the second. Yes, yeah, then, of course, the jocks pulled one back with a Kevin Gallagher thunderbolt <laughs> off his shin before the Italians hit them with a third. Y you know the jockos, Ray. I mean, how were they that night? Over the moon. But, but why? I mean, their team had just gone out of the World Cup. Yes, Peter, but uh, more importantly, uh, so had England. Yes, well, of course, they, uh, they don't really like us, do they, Ray? No, they, they hate our guts, Peter, but uh, <laughs> there's a big support for Holland in Scotland, and... Uh, <laughs> you know, they've got a huge fan club for one of the old Dutch masters. Yeah. <laughs> Johan Cruyff? Ruud Hullet? No, William III. <laughs> Well, before we stop talking about the Harry Haggis Brigade, Ray, 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 did you rate Andy Roxburgh? Well, I don't know, Peter. OK, so he's failed to qualify for the World Cup, but uh, don't forget his European record. First Scottish manager ever to be caught shagging. Score just in its Udinese nil, Roma one. A goal by Paolo Hansometti. And that's, and that's interesting, Ray, because am I not right in assuming that Paolo is Italian for Paul, which is actually Gaza's first name? <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are indeed right in that assumption, Peter. But uh, what is really fascinating about Paolo Hansometti is that his second name isn't Italian for Gascoigne. Although, I will admit, they are very similar. Well, well th that's absolutely right, and I have to admit that I'd, I'd never noticed that before, but then, of course, I haven't played football at the highest level like you, Ray. And a score update, Udinese 6, Roma 4. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, would you add him and Eve it? <laughs> Nine goals in 30 seconds. I... <laughs> I think, ladies and gentlemen, mums and dads, boys and girls, uh, that just might be some sort of record. Well, I hate to contradict you, Ray, but recently at a press conference, Gaza did nine farts in 30 seconds. <laughs> but, well, maybe that's not quite the same thing. Now, we've all been marvelling at football Italia over the past few months, but what do the Italians think of our football, especially the variety played in the northern English shire of Scotland? We spoke to Atalanta's talented midfield assassin, Claudio Psychopathico. <clears throat> uh, come esta lasagna? Um, <laughs> Asto spiumanti, uh, Mario Lanza, passo la parmigiana, rago, 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 uh, Mondeo, imo spaticus, imo spaticus. 
Uh, yes, uh, he said, uh, in Italy, we all watch Scottish football on television, where it is our country's top comedy show. <laughs> si, si, uh, il bueno, il brutto, il cattivo, eh, Mantovani di Napoli, eh, esta Gino Genelli, eh, <laughs> tutti i frutti, eh, Connetto Cappuccino, solo mio tale tele carbonara. Si, si. Uh, he thinks perhaps, however, there is maybe too much kicking in the Scottish game. Eh? Uh, in Italy, uh, is uh, Syria. In Scotland, is more like uh, Syria. Ah! Travolta, eh? Uh, Cortina Ghia. Uh, <laughs> Alfa Romeo. Uh, Alfa Con. <laughs> Fiato Dolomit. Uh, Strada Michelangelo Garaboldi's, uh, La Dolce Rai Vita, Parelli, Pizza Mozzarella. Uh, 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 he said there are players he admires. Uh, Walter Kidd. <laughs> Neil Cooper. And uh, Shitey, 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 Shitey Galloway. He's sure they would do well in Italy if they ever start up professional wrestling. <laughs> <clears throat> and after this high goal estral feast, what better to finish it off than the TV equivalent of a mug of Horlicks? Sports scene. Coming up on tonight's sports scene, our usual interview with Ali McCoist. <laughs> A token reference to Celtic, our obligatory in-depth interview with Ali McCoist. A dull piece about a provincial team and our exclusive interview with Ali McCoist. Hazel. I go Hazel. <laughs> we'll check what's the latest. <clears throat> yes, Hazel, and the latest news from the front line, hot off the press, hold the front page and the back page as well, is ask me after Scott Sport Extra Time. <laughs> but earlier this week, I spoke to Rangers and Scotland striker, who else but none other than the grand master of disaster himself, Ali Alistair Coisty McCoist. <laughs> First of all, Ali, are you missing this Stuckey? Eh, not at all, Chuck. You can interview me any time. <laughs> But seriously, Ali, I would like to ask you how you like to get away from it all. At your luxury villa at 28 Station Road in the picturesque village of Balmure, which is in the A68, just south of Eaglesham. Uh, well, that's right, Chief. Uh, yes, um, when this house came to market, I moved for it faster than a referee restart an old film game after Celtic have scored. <laughs> It really is a beautiful des res. And obviously you've got very trusting neighbours because I notice you don't have an alarm installed. But moving on. <laughs> Ali, you really have everything a Scottish footballer could hope for. Skull Cup, Scottish Cup, League Championship medals, Player of the Year awards, 
double glazing endorsement contracts. You must be loaded. Well, I don't know about that, Chico. Uh, <laughs> football's a comparatively short profession, you know, and, well, before you know where you are, it is too old and it's time to hang up your boots or send for Kilmarnock. This is, in fact, your testimonial year when you will be rewarded for your services to the Sons of William. Um, I have to ask you, Ali, don't you think there are others more deserving of such a testimonial for services to the club? Like, for example, off the top of my head, me? Uh, well, I don't know about that, Charlie. Uh... These decisions are made at a very highest level. You mean Her Majesty? No, Andy Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> a stonker! <laughs> but Ali, let's go back to the night when the Euro dream ended. Yeah. There were tears that night. Tell me, why were you greeting like a big Wayne in the television? <laughs> Well, uh, to be honest, Chick, I could give you 45,000 reasons. Of course, those quite fantastic, totally unbelievable fans. No, 45,000 was our win bonus. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Belter! And finally, Alzo. Do you think that monetarism combined with neo-Keynesian theory precipitates growth? Or is fiscal policy allied to liberal socialism the way ahead for the former USSR? Well, that's right, Chick. This is something Ian Durant and I were discussing just the other day. <laughs> and we both feel that if market forces can... But we never know what the McCoy's Durant solution to Russia's problems are. Because by now, everyone has switched over to Scotsport. Extra wine. <laughs> Scott Sport, another program promoting health and fitness, sponsored by Bevy. <laughs> and on tonight's Extra Wine, a more exclusive than sports scenes interview with. Ali McCoy. <laughs> we'll be putting on our concerned faces and getting stuck into Celtic. <laughs> and in our fantastic free to enter competition, the chance to win a full set of irons. That's Davy Irons and his entire family. <laughs> More details later, but first, what's the latest news, Jay? Well, first of all, I can exclusively reveal <laughs> that Ali McCoist will not, in fact, be appearing on tonight's programme. He's just received word that his house has been broken into. <laughs> Oh dear, um, what else, Jenny? <laughs> well, England's Chris Woods looks set to regain his international goalkeeping spot. Manager Graham Taylor feels that Arsenal keeper David Seaman lacks spunk. Now, normally we wouldn't give a monkeys about England, but because it concerns an ex-Rangers player, we put it in. Interesting. Uh, anything else, Jerry? <laughs> well, Scottish television and Radio Clyde have responded angrily to Michael Kelly's accusation 
of pro-Rangers bias. In a joint statement issued today, both companies blamed the blackout on Sporting Lisbon's financial demands, saying there could be no surrender to such extortion. <laughs> They also said they now deeply regretted not covering the match. <laughs> Especially as Celtic got gubbed. <laughs> and still, still with the Celtic boardroom saga, things took another twist today when the Rebels asked Sean Connery to join them. They see the former 007 as the ideal man to take on Michael Kelly. Or as Fergus McCann calls him, Dr. No. <laughs> As I've said before, watch this space. Thanks, Jay. Speak to you later. <clears throat> Right, well, <laughs> seeing as he was here recently with Germany and our intensive extra wine investigation has revealed he is a Protestant, <laughs> then that must mean Lothar Matthäus is joining Rangers. <laughs> Earlier today, I spoke to the Bayern Munich midfield over Stundbahnfuhrer <laughs> at his home in the beautiful German village of Bayern on the Spanish border. <laughs> Lothar, bonjour. <laughs> ich bin ein Binliner. <laughs> Voulez-vous wanted to... Uh, to flip to Scotland, though, and, um... <laughs> and just on frontier for the teddy bear. Well, you know, for sure, as a professional football player, I'm always looking for exciting new challenges, like playing 50 games a season in the pissing rain. <laughs> Posing like a haddy in the fashion pages of the Daily Record. <laughs> and of course, the ultimate challenge, winning Star Trek in the Sunday Mail. Lothar, merci beaucoup very much. <laughs> All the best to you, the bird and the wane. Well, Jerry, what do you make of that? <laughs> Interesting. Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Right, Jerry, thanks. <laughs> well, at the start of the season, Europe beckoned. Two rounds later, Europe was waving ta-ta to Scotland's representatives. Personally, I happen to think Rangers should have been seeded. They were. <laughs> In order to get an easy team. They did. after last season's magnificent European run, which is worth slabbering over again. <laughs> the first game, Marseille at Ibrox. Rangers ravaged by injury, and of course, the three foreigners rule.
Yeah. Well, that's absolutely right, Jim. But on the night, Rangers, it seemed, had four foreigners present. Hately, Stephen, Mikhailichenko, and Houdini. Ha ha. Ha Gordon, what were your recollections of that night? <laughs> well, me, Persil, Presley. <laughs> personally, I mean, personally, what intrigued me was the clash of styles between Davy McPherson's Buffon and Rudy Voller's Perham. <laughs> yeah, what impressed me that night, despite all that rain, was the remarkable staying power of David McPherson's Stanley Moose. <laughs> David Cooper? Rangers. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> On to the second game, in Bochum, which is in Germany, to play the Russians. Again, Rangers, decimated by injuries, but, Jerry, they got the result. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks to a spectacular strike by that hard-working professional Protestant, Ian Ferguson. <laughs> Hold on, Jerry. Uh, how do you know that Fergie's a prodi? Because he looks like one. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Gordon. Um, <laughs> Spartak Dynamo CSK Moscow, whatever they were called. Uh, Pish, weren't they? Well, yes, they were disappearing. <laughs> disappearing. Oh, so disappointing. But I don't like to criticise fellow professionals, so I'll just say they were utter crap. Tough talking, Gordon. <laughs> Davy? Rangers. <laughs> then it was on to Bruges, and again Rangers, utterly devastated by injuries. But Gordon, they got the result. <laughs> well, yes, they did. After losing a glow, a glow, a glow, a goldfish, <sighs> a goal. Yes, after losing a goal to the Belgian from Poland. <laughs> but they fought back with an equaliser from Peter who's Peter Hughes, the Dutchman. And then, of course, came the return at Ibrox, with Rangers almost wiped out by injuries. <laughs> but, Jenny, they got the result. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yes, the ball fell to the feet of Scott Nisbet. <laughs> and with the fans all thinking, don't just do something, stand there. <laughs> he sent an unmeanable shot into the back of a net. Now, once again, I thought the crucial man for Rangers on the night was the Diddy in the opposition goal. <laughs> and of course, Davy Cooper, you predicted Moscow was starting to come good, 
as they lost 6-0 to the Frogs. Rangers reserves. Then, of course, came the Marseille ticket allocation scandal, which meant only a mere thousand tickets for the loyal legions of Luther Jenny. Yes, well, a tragedy, a tragedy, not just for football, but for culture in general. Because I'm sure that more Frenchmen would love to have heard 5,000 Scotsmen singing such traditional ditties as Le Sash, <laughs> Surrender, No, <laughs> and Bonjour, Bonjour, Nous sommes les garçons de Billy. And then came the match itself. Apart from the final score, another great result for Rangers. <laughs> it was a tight match, not a lot of exciting play, and it has to be said, from a purist point of view, a disappointing game. But so did the purists. <laughs> it was another great result for Rangers, Gordon. Oh, great game, game, game. <laughs> Great team, Marcel. <laughs> Great players, Bowler, Bostick, <laughs> Patrick Swayze, <laughs> Peely, Wally. <laughs> we Alan Bowley, you know. Great strike by Durante. Great result. Rubbish game, but a great rubbish game for Rangers. So it was all down to the last match, and the task couldn't be clearer. Rangers had to beat the Russians and hope that Bruges could tame the tadpoles. But <laughs> it wasn't to be, was it, Jerry? Uh, no, uh, it wasn't, Jim. I'm afraid Rangers' luck finally ran out. Or, put another way, they came up against something they hadn't encountered before in the competition. A goalkeeper. It wasn't a match for the faint-hearted. I mean, was it, Gordon? I mean, what about Richard Goff? That was brutal. Yes, all that blood on his face. Well, actually, I was referring to his haircut. <laughs> so it was AC Milan and Marseille in the final. Who did you fancy to win it, Davy? Motherwell. <laughs> and of course, without in any way passing any comment on the outcome of the UEFA investigation, the cheating French bastards won. <laughs> A last word on the subject, Jerry? Yes. Well, when Rangers went out of the European Cup, it was a sad night, not just for the club, but for the whole of Scotland, who were right behind Rangers throughout this campaign. <laughs> My arse. <laughs> Scottish football, once a simple game played by semi-illiterates, now a multi-million pound industry played by semi-illiterates. <laughs> but is our beautiful game an empire upon which the sun or the daily record never sets? Because if there is one word that sums it all up, it's unpredictable. For all the worlds of football stage. And it's not us that play football. It's football that plays us. In an ever unfolding drama that arouses all the passion of Romeo and Juliet. We can be promised the glorious victory of Henry V. Then we can be stabbed in the back like Julius Caesar. Or stabbed in the shuck like Mickey Thomas. <laughs> And now, 
the end is near. And so we face the final whistle. Come on, you useless... They know the biggest bunch of titties you ever saw in your life. Come on, I know that good. Hey, how long ago? We played two minutes injury time. Ah, oh, right, ask, ask me, ask me finished, ask me, I, I, I'm done, I'm no coming yes, back. Yes, well, hey, well, hey, out of season ticket, hey. Hey, hey mind you, okay? Hey, I'll wait till. Ah, get you. Hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hit it, 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 the daddy's hit the side netting. It's mister. It's under the biggest bunch of daddies you ever saw in your life. I'm never coming back. That's it. Finito. The end. <laughs>